Good morning, fanatics, and welcome to Flow with the Markets Tuesday, volume 164. Ilya here. As always, I'm really happy to welcome you on the Trading Fanatic channel. You know what we're going to do in this video. We just jump onto the markets live right now and uh, we do a quick analysis, which is pretty much trying to flow with the market, seeing what happened on Monday and how we can adapt to what we actually forecasted on Saturday and Sunday. Because also this week is a great example of how the market just opens with a massive move and just invalidates everything and then you just have no choice but to flow with the market, right? And this is why you should never marry your setups, you should never marry like a direction or a specific level holding or the market should or must do that, no. It's all about probabilities, right? It's all about potentials and all about scenarios, right? And then of course the real skill is, is to be able to flow fluidly with the market whatever it changes the direction you go with it when it changes again you go with it again right and just keep follow the money right so first of all i would like for you to to take a look at the economic calendar because we do have uh, some important news like yesterday we had a couple of speeches um and some other important news releases uh we had also a very big expansion during asia on monday open Right, so I don't know why something during the weekend happened. And of course, we have a lot of stuff going on right now. It's very tough to trade, right? I'm, I'm having a hard time personally. Uh, but today we have uh, Lagarde, pretty much we have Lagarde speaking every single day, the ECB's president. We have durable goods today. And then we have another speech from the ECB. Consumer confidence is very important. And this one, not sure how important that is, but it looks like it's major. So yeah, be aware of those. Wednesday, what we have? Speech from Lagarde. We have some uh, JPY news right there, retail sales for the Aussie, and then we continue with some Euro news right there, USD news. There is a big mix, right? And what is lingering right there is Mr. Pablo as well. And then we have another speech from the Fed and another speech from the ECB. So this week is full of speeches, right? What happens right there? Speech, speech, speech. But Lagarde is not speaking uh, on Thursday. She probably is getting tired already. Uh, then we have harmonized index right there, CP, uh, consumer prices. Then we have GDP annualized uh, on the USD, which is very important. Jobless claims as well. Uh, consumption expenditure. Very huge news as well this week uh, to close the month with. And then on Friday, we have also quite a few news, right? So you can see GDP for the GBP. A lot of euro news right there. Um, harmonized CPI right there. Unemployment rate. Another speech. CPI, this core personal consumption expenditure, not CPI. Look at that, right? Speeches and news. It's just too much, right? It's just too much. But yes, uh, I really hope we we are going to get some nice um, trading opportunities up until then, right? So let's try to flow with the market. Let's see what happens and, of course, how we can adapt to it, right? So on the DXY, I'm just going to zoom in. And what happens? The market just opens. Where is it? Right there. Yeah, we just had this base candle right there. And then the market just opens and massively explodes into the highs. So then, of course, I marked this little zone. Like, it's not one of the strongest zones, but it's a nice kind of base. Very little candle before the expansion. So what you see happened yesterday, the market actually pulled back towards it, tapped it. But then it tries to push higher and it fails. All right, so right now, two things, two things are currently happening. We are either pulling back towards uh, grabbing more liquidity, right? Then to initiate making a move higher. Or this low right there is going to break right why well because um it did not cause any break of structure which immediately makes it potential liquidity so then we can have something like this right of course i still consider my major higher low to be right there like this is the cleanest pullback this is the cleanest push i wouldn't really say that this right there is a four hour higher low uh, if i jump on the line trial yeah we have a little bit of a pullback right there but According to me, this is not a valid range, right? Not a valid higher low. So even if this one breaks, then of course, in the 15 minute, we can start going short like this towards the demand. And then, of course, we can expect a potential continuation, right? So for me right now, it's very crucial to just follow the 15 minute time frame. What is happening? I'm just going to try to quickly annotate it. Uh, where is that? There is the brush. So we have this massive expansion into the highs, right? So where is our higher low? Well, it's pretty much within right there, right? The market starts with a correction, taps inside reacts, breaks the structure, right? That actually took it as liquidity grab and then it breaks higher, which pretty much makes the market a bit bullish. But then it comes in right there, right? And towards the supply and what it does, it pulls back, makes a 50 minute higher high and then breaks the 50 minute higher low, which is a trend change, right? So we pull back right there, beautiful short, taps inside, breaks structure again. Then what is our major lower high? It's right there. So what happens? The market goes ahead and breaks it. What caused the break? Well, it's a bit questionable because we can take this, which is already broken. And right now we can just look to, 
yeah, to take this overall big zone rider that we're currently tapping inside. Okay, so you see, we, we shift up, we shift down, we shift up, we shift down, then we push up instead of taking the high, we stop and then we shift down again. So technically right now, the 15 minute is bearish right now, right? So we have uh, the trend change happened right here. So this is where we shifted the structure. This is our 15 minute shift. And, and then we start breaking structure to the downside right there, right there, and even... Yeah, this one is not very valid because all candles made lower lows. So even if we get a break above this one, I wouldn't count it as a shift, right? To me, this is still the major one. If we have something like this and then a shift, then I will count it as a reversal. Uh, but yes, so what can I say from this kind of price action? Well, as I said, two things, right? We are either going to go higher from here, which is kind of the last demand zone but is it strong well yeah sure it caused like a reversal it caused some breaks of structure which is strong and what i really like is that we're pulling back very correctively so we're pulling back correctively and the impulse was impulsive so we can potentially expect a move higher and if not of course we're just gonna take out this low right there so uh yeah what we can do right now is of course we can just follow the the current 15 minute flow which is bearish i'm just gonna take this little supply zone right there i don't consider this one to be one right it kind of just reacted but still made the push lower if you drop on the line chart yeah you have a pullback i tried to test the line chart right now in order to help me determine higher lows and lower highs better i would pretty much i'm working on rules as well in order to, to be more systematic but yeah we can see we have a very nice rejection right now so of course uh, if we count this as a break of structure, then we can look for something like this to see if it holds and then to potentially see if it expands. But for me, I would really love to see uh, this supply being broken above. And then, of course, after this, if we have this, then I will with confidence try to look for logs. Right, so that's, that's the Dixie. I, again, do not have any specific outcome. Today, I'm just allowing for the market to move, to show me where it wants to go. And then hopefully, it's going to provide me with a continuation. Uh, Euro USD. So what we forecasted on Saturday uh, is potentially 0 0.96. The market just opened and just tapped 0 0.96. So the targets are already done. As you can see, I had a little 15 minute analysis right there, but the market just said no. We just open and just poof, rocketed to the downside, right? So all of this right now is invalid. So let's see what we can actually do. So according to me, uh, I take, I currently take my range like this. That's my 50% range. And you can see we just pinged it yesterday, right? So we just kissed it. I didn't went above. I'm even not sure if it actually crossed it. So I'm not sure if it's valid. And then what you can see similarly to the Dixie, we tried to push lower, but we fail. And right now we're pulling back. So once again, two things. This one either gonna, is going to break this high to pull us back into this beautiful supply zone right there. Or it's just pulling back to grab liquidity, then to continue lower. So those are the two <clears throat> main hourly scenarios All right and then of course if i drop to the 50 minute right now the picture gets very tricky changes up changes down changes up changes down right so if i just take the brush uh to me like after this big pump i started we, we tapped into this supply right there uh but the 50 minute came in very bullish so i did not look for shorts right there uh, my community took some shorts but they all got break even because then we had this huge spike right there that stopped at break even and then the market pretty much reversed afterwards but i did not trade right there and then what the market did it broke structure right there and how it broke it by creating a pullback and then it broke so then according to me, this was the major lower high. So what I did is I took a very little short from here. It was 0.10% risk. I took a 0.12% with commission. Uh, <clears throat> but why so little? Because I had a I had a, like a three minute zone or a two minute zone, which actually got broken when I was about to, to, to enter my trade. But then it was still within this range. So I said, okay, I waited for a candle confirmation and I entered with low risk. And then I said, if it continues to going in the direction that I'm going to scale in, but luckily it hit stop loss and it just completely sh shifted to bullish. But then what I said, well, technically right now is the mark, the market is bullish, right? Because we broke above the structure, but then the market comes in right there again in a bullish market, right? Then taps into demand, like responds, but fails to break and then it breaks lower. So just up, down, up, down, up, down. Very, very, very tricky. So what happens right now is that the market continued to make a bearish structure. There is our last structure break and there is our last trend change right there. And since then, the market is making higher highs. Okay. So right now, just right now, we are again tapping into this kind of zone right there. So is this zone strong? Well, yes, it is, right? It's it overall broke this this swing right there. It is still holding from this overall supply zones right there. So this is pretty much kind of my last resort right now. 
Now, what is happening, like, similarly to the Dixie, I wouldn't really count this one as a, as a shift of structure right now. Like, it made a... Look at all those wicks. All of those wicks are higher, which means that they're all making hard highs. There is no hard low right now. Although this candle is bearish, I do not consider it to be, um, like, a pullback candle in order for me to say that this is my shift, okay? The last demand, according to me, and the last demand, higher low, according to me, is this guy, right? So, right now, if we have this, then I will be interested to sell, right? If we break below this zone and if you of course hold from here because there is a potential that we also hold then of course we can look pretty long okay following this overall bullish flow but hey guys keep in mind we are bearish right we are bearish and technically we just pinked the 50 percent so the market can be right now getting ready to to sell off so always keep that in mind okay the bias is bearish your highest bet is is to go short but of course the question is when and how okay so personally i'm right now looking for the market to align bearish on the 15 minute which is going to look something like this, and then to potentially see if I can get a strike. If not, I just wait and, and not trade at all, because I want to see my setup come in before I execute on anything, right? Sometimes I take, like, little risks just to, just to get, like, a little flesh in the game and see how it develops, right? Euro JPY, um, yeah, so we either expected a bit pullback into the supply or a break and then a retest. Well, yeah, this example looks, like, uh, good so far. So we went ahead and broke, and then if we ask, okay, what actually caused the break? Well, we have that little base candle, right? But what you can see is happening right now. We have a couple of hours, 20 hours of a range. The market just right now went ahead and took out this high, which can be a liquidity grab. So what I'm going to be looking for right now is for the 15 minute to cause a reverse. So wow, look at that price, man. This is not good. Uh, yeah, well, we're technically trading above Asian high. We took out, was this previous daily high as well? Probably. Yeah, looks like it. Previous daily high was taken. So if you ask me, where is the 15-minute break of structure? Um, yeah, we have a bearish pullback right there. So technically, this one could be a break. And then you can take this as a supply. But this just doesn't look right with all this sloppy price right there. Uh, I would love to see a little bit of, of flow being built up into the market, something like this. Uh, but again, yeah, if you're looking to short, then this will be your best bet, right? But just look at this price. Like, uh, I don't want to trade this. Right, this also looks like EU, but uh, very complex, right? So yeah, keeping in mind, we had a forwardly break, so the forwardly is bearish. What caused the break? It's this, it's this candle right there, which acts as supply. The market comes in, fails to break, but right now it takes out the previous day high, and the 50 minute. If the 50 minute aligns bearish, then technically, guys, according to the plan, uh, you can start looking for for shorts. But this one just looks a bit sketchy, right? It looks a bit sketchy, so I would give it a little bit more time. Maybe a tap, then a new break of structure, and then I can try to get in onto the next one. Okay, so that would be my plan for Euro Yen, but I'm overall bearish. Uh, Aussie dollar, also kind of a funny development. Uh, it's tapping very deep inside this demand that we found out. Uh, but yeah, we had like a range, we expected pullbacks, but the market said no, it just dumped, right? So uh, we have a pullback right there, right? So it's a nice bullish candle, then stayed within the range, then broke. So we can say that this is a uh for hourly break then we can say that this is a for hourly supply so yeah we are tapping very deep inside this zone which i don't even remember where yeah it's the weekly zone right uh but still the for hourly is bearish so right now what we have to do is we have to wait for the 15 minute to also align bearish so we can start shorting why well because we're trading from a for hourly supply right so what the market does it taps inside takes out the asian high which is great uh, we also have a pullback right there so this is a higher low this is a higher high so if we break below this zone and close nicely below it then pull back and we get an entry setup right there right so guys i am throwing hard time frame analysis right there right and sometimes of course the higher time frames are going to develop but then the lower time frame are is not going to give you an entry and this is why uh, your win rate can be very high if you have the right entry setup because oftentimes we get like the the zone we get the supply we get the demand but if you solely enter from a supply and demand zone you're going to get stops why well because you don't wait for a lower a lower time frame confirmation okay so wait for that to set up get your zone and then as as your zone tabs then drop the lower time frame it could be five three two one minute right and then you get your intraday trade right there so technically as simple as possible this is what i'm looking for right now okay four hourly is bearish this is my four hourly lower high we pulled back very nicely we're grabbing some little liquidity within it as well uh, so if we shift right now nicely bearish i'm gonna be looking for a pullback and to potentially grab a short 
let's see AJ, probably the same as EJ, yeah, so the JPY is made also a moon lore, so we have to adapt a little bit, uh, but they also, yeah, this one is pretty similar to Ozzy, right, it pulled back right there on the foliage, then broke, and then it has this wick, uh, this reminds me of a US-30 setup, which I'm gonna show you, so we have this wick, we pull back right now, huge wick into the zone already, and right now what we have to wait for is for the 50 minute to actually align, uh, which is kind of already doing so, it's a bit tricky with this inside bar right there, then it broke, and technically this one is a break, if you wish to be even more conservative, I would say wait for a break of this one, because this one right now is a very strong demand, and what could happen is we can tap inside and then continue going higher, and this one right there can just be a fake, we have similar on the Aussie, right, on the Aussie we also have that one, so again, give it time, the market, usually before taking a trade, you sh the market should shout at you, I'm ready to get shorted. Right, so this one is technically right now getting ready. So what you can do is you can drop this, uh, this supply zone right there. And as the market comes in, you drop to a one minute, right? And as the market comes into a one minute, what you simply have to do is for the market to align bearish. And then you just start shorting it. Right, so this is what I'm going to be doing. But again, I'm keeping a little bit of a... Yeah, second, second thought that we might actually continue going higher because I really see that bullish flow right now and usually I would love for the market to align nice on the 50 minute, break a couple of structure points, start building the bearish flow and then start getting it. Like something like, yeah, I don't have a, yeah, this one, it's just, it's just choppy. I can't really get a good example. So let's try with another pair. Uh, NZD USD. So yeah, this one. Yeah, still broke below, but then it didn't give us a pullback and just dropped lower. Uh, so we're tapping into a major demand zone that we found, probably on the weekly. Uh, we pretty much right now have a valid power range, right? And we're just about to tap right now into it, right? There it is. We're tapping into it. So again, similar to all pairs, they are tapping into hard time frame supplies. They're bearish, right? And so what we have to wait for right now is for the 50 minute to align. But usually, guys, Tuesday, Tuesday is really bad. It's a real bastard because it kind of gives you a setup. And then it just reverses, right? So what we could have is like Monday making that massive manipulation, right? Massive manipulation to create the weekly low. And then usually it pulls you back, looks like a lower high, but then it's going to do this, right? It's going to reverse. And then when it does this on Tuesday, uh, sorry, on Wednesday, you can start following this new flow. Okay, so let's see. Let's see how it plays out today. This is not a valid hard low. Because all candle, candles make made a new hard high. This is a valid demand, but if it breaks below, I'm not going to count it as a reversal. Why? Well, because it's not valid, right? Uh, this is my last valid one. So you can see we have a similar situation on EU. AU are reversing. The a AUDs are reversing, but we can see the NZD is pretty much like the Euro, right? You can see that the Euro did not make a valid hard low, uh, yeah, hard low right there. So this is not a break. But if I go to Aussie, Aussie did make a new high low. Why? Well, look at that bearish candle. It, it went bearish. It didn't break the previous high. And right now it's about to break it. Okay, so you can see we, we have all of those differences between the pairs. So what I'm going to be looking for on this one is either right now for a new high and then a break of the high low or to see how it's going to come in right there, respond, then maybe break and then start following it. Okay, but also this one will be really nice to have a new high high right now to break this structure. Then we ask ourselves, okay, what actually broke that structure? We found out broke the structure. We wait for it to break and then we go for it. Okay, so technically what I'm drawing right now, it should be right here. All right, so that's a lot of lines. Hopefully you're not confused, but hopefully you get the gist of how do you flow with the market. You just monitor right now. You always stay with the hard time frames, right? You always stay with the forward time frame, but then you flow on the 15. Uh, this one also fulfilled one of the targets, yeah, which was this low. We just crushed it, so let's see how the range looks like. We're exactly the same, right? We have a, we have a supply. The flower is bearish, so what is our best bet? It's it's going short, right? This one also does not have a valid high low. Why? Well, because this bearish candle broke the previous candle high, right? So yes, this is a demand zone, but it's not a high low. So this is according to my rules right now. You can you can test it out as well. Uh, so this is my valid high low right now right? So what can happen is the market can tap right there and reverse. The market can break it and then pull back for a lower high, right? Or the market can right now tap, make a new higher high, then break that higher low, and then we can go low. So there are your three scenarios. I'm already looking ahead and I'm just waiting for them to develop. And of course, something completely new can happen to what I just said. Okay, so again, wait. And if you want to go short, you first make sure that the 50 minutes becomes bearish. 
Can we get shorts on UJ? Like this is gonna determine whether we go short on all those JPY pairs. So yeah, we're tapping deeper inside this Fawley uh, supply zone. Uh, we can see that kind of the flow is right now bullish. So what I need to see on this one is uh, even an hourly, kind of an hourly shift because we're... Yeah, we'll look at that. So I would love to see like all of this is empty, right? So the market is gonna be building up liquidity, right? Uh, and it, it wants to trick people into selling then to take them out and then to potentially reverse. So look at this right now, right? So we have this hourly impulse, right? We have this hourly impulse and then look at this correction. Do you think the market is just going to reverse from the such flat price action? It could be, right? It could be, but if it does this first, right? And then of course we can short. Uh, but I do think we might get a, a new spike into the highs to take out all of this flat price action and then to potentially give us a reversal sign, okay? So yeah, the 50 minute right now can be in a reversal phase, yep. So like we have this push, we have this pullback, uh, the market held from demand right there, but then failed to break, uh, which then technically makes a, a shift right there. And yes, it's bearish right now, but I need more time on this one, right? I need more time. We have also JPY news or something. Uh, right now, what you can do is you can also take this wick, right? Which you see on the, on the forward. This is the wick actually. So we still don't have actually a supply zone if you refine it like this, okay? So don't rush to short. On USD JPY, I personally do think we might have another leg into the highs. So be patient. And this one is very sloppy recently. So give it extra patient, patience, right? GU just continues to drop. Like it dropped 400 pips on, on Monday, which is absolutely insane. And yeah, right now it's kind of pulling back and it's just in the middle of the range. So there, there is nothing that we can do on GU. Like, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Yesterday I was looking to potentially short from this zone it came in it responded right uh but yeah then it just ended up breaking it above again uh push up so right now technically our last 15 minute break is here then the market chopped responded from demand but broke it what caused the break it's this lower high right and what we can see right now is that the market is responding from this uh, but are we really bearish well it could be look at how the market went and grabbed all of these flat highs right there with this big quick then it shifted and right now it's pulling back towards the zone. So what we have to wait for right now is for the 50 minute to align. So the 50 minute is going to align once this one breaks, right? And then, of course, we can try to go short from here. But the question is, are we at a good place to sell on the 4H? Well, let's check it out. Uh, yeah, we, if, if the move started from here, 50% is tapped. And if the move started from here, 50% is also tapped. So we can see that we pulled back about 50%. There is no flower zone, uh, which sucks. But of course, if the 50 minutes starts to turn bearish, then we can go for it. OK, so similar to all the pairs that we just covered, I'm also looking for that little uh, reversal pattern on GU and then to potentially start following it. OK, it doesn't look that bad. Uh, there is already a potential zone that we can short from. But first, I need to see this broken right there. OK, so let's wait for it, because right now we can easily respect demand and break above. And if we do, we just keep flowing. OK. Uh, GJ, it's probably, exp yeah, GJ also fell a thousand pips. Yeah, look at that. Not even a thousand, a thousand, a hundred. Right now, it's pulling back once again, of, of course, to the 50%. So the question is, is it ready to get shorted? Yeah, well, we grabbed all the liquidity. We also, similarly to GU, shifted structure right there, right? What shifted the structure? It's this zone. And we, yeah, we have exactly the same setup, right? This one looks, it came very close to the high. It almost broke it, right? Did it actually break it? No, it looks like equal. The high right there is 378. The high right there is 375. So yeah, it's just uh, three pipettes below it. And as you can see right now, this right now is valid to get shorted. Okay, so we broke the higher low. What well, broke the higher low? Well, it's this guy right there. So if you pull back towards this zone, you can drop the lower time frame and look for an entry setup. But again, isn't it a bit sketchy, right? It's kind of coming in bullish, right? Massive bullishness. Right now it's reversing. So usually in such situations, I would love to see a tap, hold a definitely one minute confirmation right there. But then if it breaks and, and confirms the, the trend change, then of course I can go for it. Why? Well, because look at that. So sometimes we can have like this, a shift, but this one just grabs liquidity to continue going higher, right? So this is a very, uh, a very often occurrence in the markets. Right, you get, you see that the shifts, right? So right now, but then it just oh, breaks above. Why? Well, it just grabbed liquidity. So what you need to see is the market reverse, then pull back, hold from here. Either get your one minute entry right there or wait for a new break. And then of course, you know, okay, we're right now bearish because we have two breaks, 
right now, which confirms the reversal. Okay, so that is a little little tip for me. But let's see, let's see how this one plays out. Of course, we uh, also want for USD JPY to align, which is not really aligning right now. So let's see how it goes. Gold keeps making new ranges onto the downside. So all we have to do is just adapt, right? So we had a nice pullback. We broke again. So technically right now it's coming in towards a four hourly zone, a four hourly lower high, four hourly supply. So what we have to wait for is for the market to tap inside, to gather the liquidity it wants, to turn the 50 minute to bearish, and then we short it, right? But you can see it's just entering. All of this is empty space. So there is no liquidity to take. So what it's going to do, it's going to tap. It's going to push. It's going to push again, and by the time it has collected, then it's going to break, and then it's going to be your time to sell. Okay? Uh, I, I heard also Anna wants to, to go long form right now, which is great, right? We forecast around 16, 16 or 1620. We kind of came towards this zone, right? But for me right now, still the Fowley is bearish, and I don't want to trade against the Fowley, right? So this is what I'm looking for right now, right? It's just freshly coming into the zone. I'm going to be looking for a few ranges. I'm going to be looking for a few higher highs, uh, potentially even some fake uh reversals right because again sometimes the market can give you a reversal right but it's fake why well because there is no liquidity this tricks people into selling then this happens they get stop loss and then we get the real sell right so that is a great liquidity pattern that you should also master okay so looking for gold right just following the 50 minute waiting for it to shift but of course first i want to make sure that enough liquidity is collected before we reverse lower uh, US 30, uh, it's making a new range to the downside right now. So pretty much, yeah, pretty much this one is invalid. Uh, it looks different than the broker I use on my other chart, but yeah, here we broke structure and yeah, we currently are tapping inside this wick, right? You can either take this wick as well. So we're tapping inside the wick. So what I'm looking for right now on this one is a 50 minute shift, right? Same stuff, guys, same stuff. Where is my 50 minute break? Oh, it's right there. This one is not because it's a, it's a high, high candle, right? If we do this and then this, that is going to be valid, okay? Because then we make a higher high. What made a higher high? This right there. So if you break it, then this is a reverse, okay? But similar to all the pairs that I just mentioned, I'm extra cautious and extra patient because it's Tuesday and the market can just start rocketing up right now. Somebody can come in, say something like from the central banks, and then we just reverse, right? So this is my outlook right now for US 30. I am short bias right now as long as we remain uh, below this zone. But if we break above this zone, then we might initiate a bigger pullback like towards uh, the daily the daily range right because right now the daily is kind of within this range right and if we just transfer this onto the foh we can see that 50 percent perfectly stays within this zone so if the flow changes i can take a short term long towards this zone and then from here we can expect the drop okay so let's see if this overall forecast is gonna this looks like a weekly outlook this kind of analysis but yeah something i expect so let's see let's see how it goes from this zone and pretty much uh, the others are also the same. Uh, although Nasdaq and S&P, I don't think they made a new lower low. So they're kind of... Yeah, they didn't make a new lower low. So they're technically still in this range. You can see we tapped 50%. And uh, then we made a massive bearish leg. Which actually caused a structure shift. So I, ha I, I don't trade, by the way, guys, Nasdaq and, and um, S&P. Right? But if I look at it, I would look something like this. Maybe I'm going to take a 30-minute zone to make it a bit bigger. Yeah, so, yeah, we're tapping already, but there is no liquidity. So, so what I'm going to be looking for right now is similar to have a tap inside deep, then a break, right? And then potentially wait for a lower high. So I'm looking to see whether, guys, we get like Euro USD short, AUD short, NZD short, US 30 short, uh, and indices is short as well. This is kind of the current sentiment, but it's Tuesday, so everything can go in the opposite direction, right? Uh, S&P is the sloppiest of them all, right? It's just kind of slopping at the downside. We still wait for this zone to get taken out, but it kind of holds. So I'm definitely not trading this one. It's, it's rather rather sloppy also intraday. So waiting for it, waiting for a new lower low where I'm going to deploy even more capital into stocks. Uh, Bitcoin is giving us a big push, right? So let's see. But yeah, it tends to give us big pushes just to scare us out and then it's, it goes lower. I'm not into Bitcoin right now in Ethereum. So I'm just letting them go. Okay, so let's see. Let's see what's gonna happen. I'm very curious right now. I just keep following the 50 minute, uh, the 50 minute flow. I need to see it go in my direction, and then of course it's easier to catch trades. Okay, so DXY right now it's pulling back towards this demand, but the structure on the 50 minute is still bearish. So what we want to see is for it to turn bullish, right? Euro USD is kind of slopping around this supply, like it tapped. It, it, this one is not a break according to me, right? So right now what could happen is we can pull back 
hold and then if you break this one then i'm going to be looking for the short something like this uh the jpys are also kind of cooking for a little short but they're like mm, a little bit 50 50. Uh, you can see Aussie is struggling to break below this zone if it breaks then be aware of this demand zone right so it's a little bit this blue zone is pretty big nzd as well wait for it wait for another push into the highest potentially then to give you the the reversal and always remember that this pattern is a big bastard right you get a shift and then it takes you takes you out right and this is usually when the market hasn't gathered enough liquidity use the jpy give it some time i do think we might have another leg into the highs gold wait for it to develop and then try to sell it and the indices i'm looking to see whether they're gonna go short okay so that's for me guys hopefully the update was sufficient hopefully you loved it it's 30 minutes i tried to keep it shorter but i can't i talk too much uh, but hopefully you're watching hopefully you're learning as well let me know down in the comments if you do i wish you a crushing week ahead of you and uh, talk to you hopefully on saturday